Okay, Ronnie, so my right elbow is killing me from all the freaking liposuction. This is called sound wave therapy. Pain was right. No. <laughs> My name is Dr. Suzanne Court. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon, both in Beverly Hills as well as Sunny Palm Springs. I did an internship with Dr. Oz at Columbia, and I graduated from USC. I remember when my professor said, Dr. Court, you're far too tan to be a surgical resident. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I've trained for plastic surgery for over 18 years. That led to me opening up my own practice about 15 years ago. I mean, I've done plastic surgical procedures literally from the scalp to the toes. I do it all. So between Beverly Hills and Palm Springs, my waiting list can be very busy. Sit back do my I really back. wanna do this? Yes, you do, okay. because you'll be pain-free all surgery. So let me know when I've hit a sensitive spot. Oh, mother I may practice here on the West Coast, but ultimately I am an East Coast Jersey girl. Oh, mother Oh, wow. I think I can be a little bit too raw at times. <laughs> oh, How's it feel? I don't know if I love you or hate you. Oh, I think I love you. I know times are changing. Some people are on the computer keyboard, it seems, more than they are talking to a patient. Back in the day when I trained, I loved that grit that I think can be missing nowadays. I also think that sometimes when you're not pushed to a certain point, you can get a little soft. My name is Blake, I'm 25, and I've got another face on my face. <laughs> Before this happened, probably two or three years, I had a bump come up on this side of my face also, and it ended up going away after six months to a year, and I thought this was the same thing, so I left it, and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and... <laughs> You're I'm here Blake. to see Dr. Q. Excellent. Let me get you checked in. I cannot wait to meet Dr. Q and finally get this off of my face. I'm married. I have four kids. They definitely notice that I don't play with them as much. I don't go out with them as much. I don't like pictures. I don't like going out in public. I don't like anything <laughs> anymore. When I'm out and about, people are always looking at me. I would love to get rid of this. That way I can get back to my normal life. I can take my kids out in public and actually feel confident in myself. Hi there. How are you? Nice to meet you, nice Dr. Meet you. Court. Hi, they call me Dr. Q. It's real easy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. So let's start from the very beginning. It started real small, just like a whitehead. And how long ago would you say that was? About six years ago. <gasps> Holy schmoly, I'm just shocked. This is the biggest mass that I've seen. We need to help him. It's pretty much doubled in size every year. And did anyone treat it or did you squeeze on it or anything uh, at all? I tried to squeeze on it and stuff. It never came to a okay. head. Yeah. I just... We tried hot compresses and some kind of salve that's supposed to bring boils to. And no. Well, that's probably not what this is, so yeah. we'll see. <laughs> Then after it started getting bigger, I told him, like, you need to go get this checked out. And he finally did, like, a year ago. The only doctor I've had look at it made me feel very uncomfortable because he was telling me I'd probably have partial face paralysis from it. They hadn't dealt with that kind of stuff very often. And I just really did not trust somebody like that to take it off my face. So it kind of ended there. What kind of work do you do? I'm a contractor. Run my own company, so oh, wow. I've pretty much let it be stagnant because my image is pretty much everything. So without it, I ain't tried to make it grow. I haven't done anything. How about your relationship and you? Because when you met him, you didn't have this. No. Right? So has this changed? It's changed his temperament a little bit. I can tell he's a little bit more testy at times, and it's just caused a little bit of a riff in our marriage. But if we are able to get this removed, he would finally realize how much he has been missing. Because he has, he's locked himself up from the world pretty much. He goes out to just enough so that we can live. But other than that, he's just shut himself down. 
Well, I'd love to help you, Blake. I'm gonna have you do a few things for me, okay? Go ahead and shut your eyes real tight. Good. Open, give me a big old smile. Good, go ahead and blow me a kiss. Don't get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a death. <laughs> and then I'm gonna palpate it a little bit. Yeah, it's very mobile. Mm -hmm. So what that means to us is consistent with kind of a benign mass rather than something that's growing into right. structures and gets fixed. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just measure it real quick, okay? So this is about seven centimeters in length, and that's the size of a baseball. A mass of this size poses such a challenge for me because I really don't know what to expect. I don't know what's inside of it until I get in there and cut it open. It caused a lot of stress because I, of course, was worrying that it was something malignant or something. Sure. Well, after I excise it, we will send it to pathology. They will look at it under the microscope, give us a definitive diagnosis. But I know you've already had the workup that, you know, there's no lymph nodes and no, no you know, other things of concern that, but what you were worried yeah. about is being malignant, which is absolutely the first thing you worry about. Yes. I really want to help you because to have this, it's just heartbreaking. However, with big surgeries also come big risks, okay? Whenever we're doing facial surgery, there's a nerve called the facial nerve. Sometimes you can get numbness and tingling. The worst I would suspect, maybe a little drooping on that side of your lip. I just want my face back. <laughs> <laughs> it was so lovely to meet you both. Thank you, you too. I'm going to help Blake the very best way I can, okay? Thank you. All right, I'll see you both soon. Hey, boo-boo, how come you don't let mommy do your hair? You're so good for daddy. <laughs> you okay. never let mama do that. One of the sacrifices I think female surgeons make is placing a lot of things on hold. I was a little over 47 years old when we had Isabella. What color no. one do you want? Pink? No, we're going black. What about hot pink? I match your shirt. Pink. Yeah. You're too cool for school, Bella Boo. Just one, two, three, go. All right. Give mommy right? vessels. Rick is such an involved dad, and Bella is such a daddy's girl. Come on, let's go. Wait, give mommy vessels. Hey, vessels, vessels for me. Vessels. <laughs> oh, I love you. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Right. I think I've also learned to really be present and in the moment, whatever the moment is. Give mom a kiss. Mwah. There you go. You have a great day at school today, Boo Boo. I'm gonna miss you. Hi, good morning. Hi. Good morning, I'm Blake. I'm here Hi, to see Blake. Dr. Key. Okay, I'll go ahead and check you in if you want to have a seat. Thank you. My dream is just to be normal again, be able to walk around without catching everybody's eye, just being able to sleep on either side of my face I want, just to feel confident again in the way that I do look, and I just want to go. <laughs> So I'm super excited today to see what this mass is on Blake's face. A mass of this size and the location poses a lot of potential risks. I have to be very careful that I don't injure facial nerve branches in the area, that I don't get into blood vessels that are in this area. It's sitting right on top of a critical facial muscle called the masseter. I mean, I can't mess this up and cause him, you know, some permanent damage. For Blake's surgery, I will make an incision across his lower cheek and peel back the skin. And once I determine what's inside, I'll remove it. And then I'll sew the skin back together and try to minimize the scar. They need better dermatologists in Virginia. <laughs> this is the skin I don't like, right? So I have to remove it. Okay. I was hoping to keep his scar way under his jawline. Right. So that when it healed, you wouldn't even see it. Right. But because I can't preserve this bad skin, I have to alter my plan. 
because we want to get healthy skin to healthy skin in the end, because we need this sucker to heal, right? Right. Let's hope the pimple popping right. gods are with us today. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go real slow and superficial. Cut time. Uh, 52. Oh my God. Oh. 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 oh my God. Well, we know what it is. Opening up this cyst and seeing all of this volcano of cheesy substance really has characteristics of an epidermal inclusion cyst where you get buildup of keratin and proteinaceous material that results in this cheesy content. That's beyond pimple. This is beyond a pimple. This is a pimple on mega steroids. Even though an epidermal inclusion cyst, they're common, it's really unusual to grow this size. It doesn't look infected to me, though. It looks like clean, sebaceous material. Yes. Thank goodness this was just a benign cyst and nothing more complex or concerning. We're going to culture the contents, rule out any uh, infectious organisms, and then we're going to just get this cyst out with its capsule. If you leave it behind, sometimes then the cyst can come back. Yay! Okay, so we got this sebaceous cyst wall out in all of its entirety, which is wonderful because we don't want this to recur. Oh my God, his life is gonna be back to normal, yay! He can go to his kids' functions. They can go out to dinner. So rewarding helping Blake today and getting rid of this huge mass. But now I have the challenge of trying to sew healthy skin back together. I'm actually going to give him a little facelift while we're at it. So what I'm trying to do is bring this skin flap as close to his jawline as I can so that he doesn't have a big scar right across his cheek. I'm sewing the deep tissue layer together to close off any dead space where inflammatory fluid could collect. We're done. All right. Good job, doctor. Woo! A lot has changed since the surgery, especially with my life. It's been a complete 180. Oh my gosh, look at you, Blake. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Wow, look at that smile. Do you feel like a new man? Definitely. <laughs> I definitely feel like a new man. Before the surgery, it was like I had another face on the side of my face, and now there's nothing there. I have nothing to worry about. And it's definitely changed my attitude and changed my life. When you first walked in the door at home, what did the kids say? What did they do? They was amazed. Yeah. <laughs> My youngest girl actually was like, I liked it better with your bump. Oh, <laughs> that's kids for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she it. It was just it. a change to her. Because she couldn't play with it anymore. <laughs> yeah, it was a change to her. OK. How's your wife Erica doing? She's doing real good. We've went out a few times. It's definitely a lot easier being able to go places without me being stressed out all the time. It's definitely changed mine and Erica's relationship for the better. We can be in public without me being frustrated and on edge. It's not aggravating either one of us. So how's work been since surgery? It's been a lot different. I definitely feel more comfortable going to job sites and taking oh, on bigger great. jobs and stuff. Yeah, I actually went back to school full time too. You did? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What are you studying? Uh, criminal justice. For years, I've been wanting to go back to school, but because of what I had on my face, I put myself in a box. But now with it gone, I can go back to school. I can build my business. I can be myself. So let me inspect the scar a little closer. Perfect. Yeah, so it's nice and pink and thin. 
over time, the scar will then flatten and fade even further, so you won't even see it. So the good news is there was nothing malignant at all. No infection, nothing to worry about. What's the potential of it coming back or another one forming? One of the risks is if you leave any bit of that capsule that was surrounding your mask, you have a higher risk that it could reform. But I'm confident that we got all of it out. You know, you shouldn't have a high risk of any recurrence. Now, to protect you from developing further cysts, acne wash and getting your skin in it, it's already looking better. I am so thrilled for Blake. First of all, he just looks so handsome. But the thing that's most remarkable is he won't stop smiling. Before, he was just kind of reserved and shy and kind of shrunk a bit in front of you. And now, he's just super confident. Blake is a true testament to the power of plastic surgery and why I got into this because it's not just about fixing people on the outside, but seeing their changes on the inside. I mean, that's the most gratifying part of it all. Well, I'm so thrilled for you and your family and your new careers. I mean, you guys got a lot of exciting things ahead, it sounds like. Yeah, definitely do. <laughs> Look at this smile. I just can't <laughs> stop staring at your smile. I think that's the best part of it. All right, my dear, well, it was wonderful to see you. Oh, it was amazing to see you again, too. <laughs> Thank you so, so happy much. For you. <laughs> okay.